Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Weller and today I'm going to show you how to make your own Dungeons and Dragons pawns. Now this is something I wanted to do a long time ago. I've spent a little bit of time actually prepping for it because I already made some pawns. So this isn't the first time I've made pawns. I've made them before and uh, we're trying to duplicate this product. Now Pathfinder put out a product, the pawns, these things, which are quite cool and quite cheap to buy but probably even cheaper to make because essentially it's a bit of cardboard with an image on it and you just pull it off and it's got a base that's it that's all we've got to do nothing more so that sounds like a pretty easy job as far as I'm concerned and as it turns out I'm right and there's a few videos I don't think there's a lot of videos but there are some very good ones on YouTube already showing you how to do this so I'm going to put these aside so this takes up a lot of space and you might have noticed that my work area is cluttered today because there's so much stuff here. So I'm going to move this out of the way and dump that away. And the first thing is I'm going to show you what I've made in the past. And then we're going to work towards duplicating that. So these are some samples of things I've made in the past. Okay, very simple. Now, I don't know that you can necessarily see that. From this uh, this distance but I'm gonna move it forward and hopefully it'll be in the center of the screen and you can see this is the image that I've put on whoops down a bit down a bit down a bit okay so this is the image and it's double-sided okay so the same image on the other side and it's in full color and there's no white so how did I make this well I actually used magic the gathering cards that's what I did I used them, I cut them out, I shaped everything, and then just pumped out as many as I possibly could. So I've got this one, I've got a, quite a few, and they're quite unusual monsters. They're not just, you know, there's some good artwork on those Magic the Gathering cards. So I made, I even made an NPC, it's like a, a wizard, I'll see if we can get that in the right place. You can see there, okay. So that's what we're after, and as I said, the double-sided. And they're also coated so that they last a bit longer because the originals don't have any film on them and as you slide them in and out they sort of get damaged over time. So there's some things you will need to be able to make this product. So I'm going to just shift these out of the way and go through my little list of items. And it's quite a long list unfortunately, but none of it's really that expensive and you probably already have it lying around. That's the great thing. So we'll dump that out of the way. So the first thing is you're going to need... PVA glue. Now it doesn't need to be really expensive PVA glue, it can be cheap stuff. I'm just using exterior quality because uh, most of the work that I do is with wood and so I tend to have exterior um, <laughs> PVA glue for woodwork. So that's what I'm using. So PVA. Next, craft knife. Um, I've got two craft knives, a small one and a big one. This is primarily because cutting through the cardboard is quite difficult. And you don't want to be doing everything with scissors because the scissors won't last very long. So a good sharp blade and uh, yes, you're ready to go. Next, you need those scissors. It would be helpful to have a larger pair of scissors, but if you don't, small scissors will do. Yeah, as I said, large scissors would be better. I couldn't find my large scissors, so we're stuck with the small ones. So now you need some thick cardboard. This is the insert in between that we're going to use to actually build out and make our, our pawns thicker. Because it's not going to have the image on it. We've got something else for the image. So I'm just going to grab some cardboard. Now, I didn't go and buy this. This is just the back of a, a drawing pad. Okay, it's thick enough. It's, it's not high quality cardboard by any means, but it's thick enough to do the job. And we should be able to use that and get a decent uh, product at the end. So, some cardboard. Put that out of the way. Alright, Magic the Gathering cards. Now, I know what you're saying. I don't have Magic the Gathering cards. Well, the simple fact is that there's so many of these things around. Chances are you can pay almost nothing or you can get them for free. And my friends uh, tend to play Magic the Gathering. And I've got a whole bunch of cards here, which he has pretty much put into order. Thank God for that, so I don't have to search through stuff forever. That would just drive me nuts. So that is going to be really handy. So as many Magic the Gathering cards with images that you will find interesting and can duplicate your monsters or NPCs. Right here and here. Is now I know it says 
Warcraft, but it's just the boxing inside of Magic the Gathering cards. So it's another product you'll need. Uh, sellotape. Now, you don't have to have a fantastic sellotape, but see-through. You know, something transparent. You don't want it to be that, um, that foggy stuff or frosted um, tape. You want it see-through sellotape. Okay. Next, baking paper. Now, the reason for the baking paper is it's got a, a waxy surface, and I do not want my pawns sticking to my table or the paper that I'm working on or my cutting board. So make sure you have some, some baking paper. You probably find that in the kitchen. It's not hard to find. Something heavy. I'm going to actually have to stick stuff on top of my pawns to make sure that they stay flat and they stick down. So I have this. This is my dragon letter opener with a sword. So it's pretty heavy and I'm going to use that for that particular purpose. Alright, shuffle that over there. Next, paper towels, which I have here. Um, this is just to clean up the glue, really, and keep your fingers from getting stuck to stuff. So a couple of bits of paper towel or just a rag is perfectly fine. I'm going to put them out of the way for now. They can just sort of live over there. Uh, next, we need a straight edge because there's a lot of cutting involved. So I've got a straight edge here. A metal straight edge would be better, and I was planning to have a metal straight edge today, but when I went to go and buy one, it was cheap enough. It just, uh, the problem is it was so long that I realized I couldn't work in the area with a really long straight edge. So I'm using a plastic straight edge, and I have a backup if this doesn't work because this is. This is my rule, and um, it uh, probably will wind up getting cut into if I'm not too careful. Never mind. Okay, next product. You'll need pawn bases. Now, if you don't already have Pathfinder pawns, getting the bases is actually not that difficult. You can purchase them online. I bought mine from the book depository. This is what you're looking for. It's the Pathfinder pawn base assortment set. And it gives you 10 medium-sized bases, 5 large bases, and 2 huge bases. It didn't cost me very much. I think it's about 6 or $7 New Zealand, which means it's probably going to be even cheaper if you're buying it in North America. Uh, maybe a little bit more expensive outside of those locations. So you can buy these off um, the Pathfinder website. You can get them from Amazon, and you can definitely get them from the book depository, which I like because I'm in New Zealand, and free shipping is awesome. So this is the expensive side of things. Really, the most expensive side is buying these things. But you don't have to use these. You can substitute those for a clip. This is just a bull clip, okay? A pinning clip. You might have seen them before. You can buy small ones. You can use... Larger ones, I've got some larger, large ones. The great things about the, um, this thing is you can squeeze it, insert something in there, not my finger, and then close it up. And then when you're ready to actually use it as a base, you want to get rid of these things, right? You can just squeeze in, remove them. I've done this before, and I think there's a video that shows you how to do it. And you suddenly got a base with your pawn sitting in it, which we will actually do. And I could probably do it right now to show you if you wanted. But the whole idea was to actually make some uh, pawns, and I really want to get on to doing that since there's so many things to talk about in terms of what you need. Let's get that out of the way. Move that over there. Okay, uh, next, a, a sample or template. So my sample or template are the original pawns that I showed you just a second ago. We're going to use them and draw around them to give us a pattern. And lastly is... Well, not lastly, second to last, is some clear adhesive sheet. Uh, this is what you really want rather than sellotape. You can get by with sellotape, okay? That's certainly the cheapest way to do it. But if you go, I spent, I think, two or three dollars to buy some clear adhesive uh, book covering. And this is going to cover your pawns so they don't get damaged, okay? And they don't get, um, uh, as you pull them in and out of the base, they sort of get uh, little marks in them, and this will help make them survive a little bit longer. So that's what you'll need. And finally, either a pen for marking or a pencil, so you can see where the lines are when you're doing your cutting. That's going to be fairly important. All right, 
I just need a drink of water because I've been talking for too long. Let's start off with just making our insert, the base piece, the piece in the center. We actually have to have a template, right? Because that's what I've talked about. So I'm just going to grab two samples, medium size, and I need a large size, just like that. I'll put those bases over there. Slip this up. So I want to do not just large size creatures, but I want to do medium size creatures. And those are my samples. So I grab my cardboard. And my first job is to just draw around this thing. I'm going to draw around with pencil to start with. I'm going to get rid of that mouse that's just getting in the way. Okay. Now I find that you find a straight edge and put the base of it there so you don't have to do too much drawing. And, uh, you know, the more you cutting you have to do, the more of a hassle. I'm, I'm a lazy person, man. I don't like to have to spend too much time doing anything. Um, I just don't have time either. Okay, so that's that's got it pretty much right. And when we just draw around that, and you notice that there is a curved area. And a curved area means that you might have to do some cutting with some scissors because Stanley Knife might not necessarily do a great job with that. So there's my first template. I'll just write template on it. I don't think you can necessarily see the lines because I did it in pencil. Template. Okay. So, straight edge and a cutting knife. And we're going to cut this out. And hopefully that's locked in place. Good. I don't want to hurt myself. If you can't see, please let me know. I'm going to try to make sure that all of my... Uh, my cuts you can see so the process is actually going to be <laughs> useful to you rather than just hearing about it okay once you cut through that's cut through it's done cut through on the other side now the plan is I do one of these and then that's pretty much the the workshop done but I will hang around and continue to make them for a little while and answer questions because I know people might have some questions, and uh, keep cutting. The cardboard is really thick, so you have to sort of score it the first time and then just recut until it comes out. Okay, done. So that's template one, and to tidy it up and get it ready, we just got to cut off the corners, which are rounded. So I just follow my pencil line and cut round. Bam, done. That was easy, and same thing again. Cool. All right, it's a bit of waste. So that's my first template, and this is for a large pawn. Now you'll notice with some of the pawns that the actual creature that's illustrated here doesn't actually take up the whole height. So even if we use this template and the creature we make is wide but not that tall, it doesn't matter. So don't get caught up with that, it's not important. Let's put that out of the way. Okay, we're going to do the same thing and we're going to make a medium size template. Because that's probably the most common one you're going to make, is a medium size creature. And let's make sure I get it up against my straight edges so it's not too wacky. Don't want the wacky ones. All right, and pencil again. I'm sorry if you can't see the pencil mark. I just don't want to use pen. I'm just a little bit worried that I'll wind up making a mess of my uh, my pawns, which I would like to use. <laughs> okay, same thing again. Grab that sharp knife and a straight edge. Put it up against the line. Like all things, remember, when you're looking at your line, you want to not cut the line off. I'm going to try and leave the line on. So I'm scoring it just lightly, and then just keep recutting until you go all the way through. Like so. Ah, I think I got it. Feels like it. That's good news. How's it going, Derek? And now it is time to scroll.
underscore at the top. You know, this is, you know, anybody could do this. This isn't like uh, one of those things that you sort of have to have a lot of skill. You just, it's time, you know. <laughs> That's the biggest resource, isn't it, when it comes to doing anything with Dungeons and Dragons, prepping for your games, is time, which you just don't have. The most valuable resource. Okay, move that out of the way. And I just want to cut off the top. Now, the reason for cutting off the top is so that you don't wind up with edges that, uh, as a general rule, will just get folded and foxtailed. You don't want that. So curving is always a good idea. Let's trim that off. And we'll do the next one. Do, do, do. Follow the line, follow the line, leave the line on. There we go. Okay. Now... It's not like I'm manufacturing something. I'm not stamping it out. So there, it'll be a little bit... It won't be completely perfect. Right. Right template. Oh. My guts is doing all sorts of horrible things. Okay, so that's the center piece. And we're going to cut out uh, pieces to go onto that. So I have a whole bunch of magic... The gathering cards. I'm going to pull them out, and we're just going to select something. Uh, what is this? It, this looks like a, a spell, so we just skip past that. I want a monster. I want something that is a general role I could use in my game, and that is a picture of a hot head giant. I feel like if I've got more than one hot head giant, it's time to do a hot head giant. Cool artwork. This is what I love about the. Um, Magic the Gathering cards is the artwork is really nice and there's no white spaces so I can I can probably fit that on with my template and cut that out and we'll be sweet as so put that aside oh there's another one I might use that as well that is the Heart Lash Cinder Heart Lash Cinder we'll grab one of those as well two, two cards of each really you want two cards of everything okay and then shuffle us through. What is this? No, this looks like a spell of some kind. Doop, doop. I did actually order all of these so that I could find stuff fairly quickly. Can't use that because there's only one of them. And this, this would be really cool, but I don't think it's going to work. Okay, so let's just get these out of the way. I've got two cards. We'll have a go at making one large size, and the same process follows. Whether you're using a large size or you're doing a small size, it doesn't matter. It's exactly the same. So we'll move that out of the way. So this is my first card that I have to line up and cut out. Now, as a general rule, I find that there's lots of trimming to be done, and the first trim that I want to do is just cut off the top. And so rather than... I want straight edges I can work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my small knife, my straight edge, and I'm going to cut off the top of the magic card. Oh. My head's in the way you let me know. No, I'm just it's hard to see from this angle. And oh, don't move. Yeah. Okay, there's the top gone. Cool. Excellent. Do the same thing with the other card. The less trimming we need to do when we're using a template, the better. So do the trimming beforehand if you can. Because you want things that will sort of line up. It doesn't really matter if you don't get it completely perfect on both sides. Because nobody's going to really know. You might know. I'm a fussy person. I try not to be a bit of a perfectionist, but it does happen. Okay. So, now, lining up my template, I've got to decide where I'm going to um, set it up. Is it going to be on that side? Is it going to be on this side? I kind of feel like in the center would be nicer, so that I get a better image. But that's actually kind of a little bit more hard work. So what I'll do is I will line it up and cut off one edge and use that and match it on the other card. Okay, that's usually what I've done in the past. It works out pretty well. Just make sure it's reasonably straight and score it. 
for one. Make sure you get a good sharp blade, otherwise this is going to be a real pain. Right. Okay, so I've scored my card, and all I've got to do now is just line it up with the other card, and that should give me my line. Oh, there we go. And I'll just draw a line there, so that everything is roughly in the same place. Okay, I've got a pencil line to follow now. Put that on the side. Do, 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 do. And just got to follow my pencil line. Everybody's rather quiet. Either that or you're sitting there painting and doing something else while you're uh, watching me cutting bits of cardboard. <laughs> oh. Okay. This is why a steel edge is better. A steel edge means it won't slide so much. Particularly as the um, steel rule is a bit heavier too. Okay, so I've got my two images, I've got my two edges to help me line up my template. And now really all I have to do is grab this thing and mark it out. Nothing to it. Pretty easy. Nothing, nothing hard at all, eh? So... First line. Problem with um, pencil is it doesn't necessarily show up everything. Now you'll notice that the template is longer than the image on the card. And as I said, it, it doesn't matter. You know, we're still going to get the width. You're still going to get the basic idea of your monster. And if you want to add um, a little bit more to the bottom of the card, you can. It's up to you. That's not an issue. Okay. All right. So hopefully I can see my pencil lines and get my straight edge. I'm going to do this twice. This is the only hassle is the fact that, you know, <laughs> cutting everything out twice. Plus you've got your center to make. So that's quite a few cards to, to, to slice up. Which means each one takes a little bit of time. Ah, okay, that's that one done. And the next straight edge right there. Oh, the line is very hard to see. I'm going to use my um, black marker next time. Okay. Okay. All right. Get that done. Where's my scissors? And I follow the curve that I have drawn with my pencil line. Now you won't be able to see it from here, but I'm having to angle it, use the light, so I can see the pencil line. You're probably going to need to use a, a darker marker, or something that will show up on something that is dark, so that means a lighter marker. Okay, not perfect, but it'll do. And the other side, follow the line. Okay, alright, so... This written piece, I don't really want this. I'm going to ditch this part at some point. It's going to come off. Okay, so don't worry about it. But that's the first part of your, your poem. Now, I'm going to line this up, and I'm just going to draw around that, just for the sake of my sanity. And there. There's my pen. And I'll just draw... Uh, that marker doesn't like the um, the glossy surface on the cards. Go back to the pencil. Either that or my sharpie starting to run out of um, ink. That's entirely possible. Okay. Get a nice, good, dark line so I can see it for my cut. And same thing there. Sorry, my fingers are in the way and I'm, you know, the last thing you want to see is the back of my hand. I'll try to move it around so you can see more. Sorry. Okay. Did I get everything? Oh, I missed the other side. Oh. Got to do the corner on the other side. Stay. 
There we go. That's that. All right, so I'm going to use a smaller knife because it's a little bit easier for me. And my straight edge. Actually, I'm going to ditch this one. I'm going to go to my technical drawing tools instead. It just looks flatter. Next time I ever do this, I'll make sure I have a steel edge that's 30 centimeters long. Oh, that was that was easy. I've got so many steel rulers at work. I don't know why I didn't just bring one to work um, home just for the day. I've probably got one down in the workshop too downstairs. Oh, that was easy. Piece of cake. And our scissors. Try to keep the area clear and clean so we don't get hurt ourselves or make a mess. Okay, so that pencil line there. It's got more than one pencil line. That's not helpful. Okay, that's that. And then the other side, which I feel like I'm going to just match that up and make sure I've got the right line. It's the outside line. It's the outside line. It doesn't matter anyway. I can recut it if I have to, if it's wrong. It probably is the wrong line, but never mind. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I've got those two pieces, which are going to be stuck together around my template, just like so. Really simple. That's the whole idea. That's what we're aiming for. I don't want the written piece at the bottom. Now you can put a piece of card over that or you can block it off if you want. In my case, I decided the best thing was don't worry about the height and just trim it off. Okay? So, trim. Alright, so there's my template that I made before. Now, I could cut into this or I could keep this and make another centre, which is really what I want to do, okay? Otherwise, I've got to recut it again and that's just a drag. That means pulling out this thing and doing it all over again. So we won't do that. So we'll make a centre. And because we've been sticking with our two edges that are nice and straight, we shouldn't have too much trouble marking this out. Now, the other thing is you don't necessarily have to use this template to mark out and make, make your next center. If it's shorter, okay, so it's shorter, we've already marked it off based off our template, okay? We can ditch this, and since this is shorter, we can mark it straight on here. And that's what I'll do. The fewer cuts I have to make, the better. that and, um, and I'm doing it again I'm gonna make sure I'm pointing uh, pointing the, so you can see get a view of my hand right all right there is my marks remember the really heavy cardboard that's why I brought the big knife the big knife is to get through the heavy card because it's much harder to cut through then that, uh, that magic the gathering card. And I want to go the other way around. I don't like doing it that side. If I balls it up, I'm only ballsing it up on this side, right? There we go. Line it up. Cut. And keep cutting until we go all the way through. Good. That's done. And next one. So for those of you who are wondering what day and time it is in New Zealand, it is Saturday, it is about 2 o'clock or 2 p.m. in the afternoon, the sun is out and I'm inside. I know that sounds strange. Alright, next. 
Now, I don't think that trimming off those corners just yet is actually such a wise idea. And the reason being is that if I glue them on and I haven't made a particularly good job with my cuts here, it doesn't matter. I can trim it up after. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. As long as these two cards are lined up and they're pretty much identical, and if they're not, I can just trim with my scissors so they do match up. And just get make it a bit more rounder here. Okay. All the trimming can be done later anyway. All right, so now we're on to gluing, and what I want to do is make sure I set up my area for laying it out and drying it, because it's going to take a little while to set before you can put your film on and, uh, and make it sort of you know watertight. So there's my glue. We'll move that over here. I'm going to grab a little bit of paper. Just tear that in half, like so. Now the, the glossy surface is the one that needs to be up against your work, otherwise it'll stick. It's the whole point of using the grease proof paper. And then it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just it's just so it's gonna dry and not stick to things. Alright, so there's my grease proof paper ready to go. I've got my heavy heavy thing ready to go as well. Grab some glue. And the first thing is, let's start one side at a time. Ah, this is the thing with glue, you're going to make sure that it doesn't sort of set in there. Oh, there we go, we're, we're moving. I'm a big fan of using your finger rather than using tools. And when you're putting PVA glue on, um, I think a lot of people make the mistake of putting too much on. So try not to put too much on, just use your finger, spread it around. The other thing about PVA glue is it actually works better if it's not completely just straight out of the bottle. What you want to do is get it to a point where it's starting to set slightly. I find that PVA glue sets really well if you leave it for about a minute before you actually stick whatever it is that you want to stick together onto it. Um, just so that it has had time to sort of cure a little bit. It's not going to do much. I mean, it takes about an hour for most PVA glues to harden. But if I just sit that there, just grab my paper towel, good thing I brought that along, and just let it sit there just for a little bit, grab myself a drink of water while I wait. <sighs> okay, let me get rid of that, clean up my area. It's one of the things is you're going to have lots of little bits of card everywhere when you finish doing this. <laughs> Alright, so here's my Magic the Gathering card image and all i got to do is stick it on. Now the first thing is you don't want to try and stick it on perfect. The trick is, is you want to work it back and forth. I don't know whether people understand this but PVA glue doesn't really work unless the surfaces are well and truly in contact with each other. And the best way is just to wiggle them back and forth until you push any excess glue out. All right, okay. So that card, that the big thick card that I cut is actually a little bit bigger than my image. But it doesn't matter because I can trim that up later. Yeah, remember we can do that stuff after. It doesn't have to happen now. Okay. Normally what I would do is I would do these in batches and when I'm applying my card to one side I would leave it and then come back to it and do the second side but I can't sort of do that in this situation because you guys are all watching and wondering when the heck this is finally going to be over, right? So I'm going to just flip it over. I'll do the other side but I would not normally do it this way. I would do them in batches so that I can leave one side to set. There we go. Yeah, the coolest things are things you make up yourself. 
I, uh, I, s <laughs> I almost lost my voice yesterday. And um, I've been doing a whole lot of reviews of adventure books that I have run. Not first impressions, but actually run. And man, it was, it was hard work. <laughs> it was re really hard work. I had a couple of people here in New Zealand who, who said, look, Fred, it's all very well you're doing this stuff, but yeah, stop mucking around and show us some of the adventures that you've run and talk about them. So that's what I tried to do. I'm glad you find it um, cool, um, Derek. It's good. I wanted this to be a useful video. Like, like everything I do, I try to make it as useful as possible. Um, some of them aren't so useful. Sometimes they just feel like garbage, but hey. Guess what? I had my keyboard die on me. It finally passed away. I've been struggling to do anything uh, with the YouTube channel because I couldn't type the letter A. <laughs> uh, who would have guessed that letter A appears in so many words? <laughs> I guess it's because it's a vowel. <laughs> anyway. So that is hopefully stuck on. Now... Don't assume that that's stuck on and going to be perfectly fine. I don't want to actually cut it just yet. What I want to try to do is whichever edge, the bottom edge needs to be pretty flush on. So make sure that it's flush. So just push it down. Then find this side that both are actually flush up against. The other side might have a little bit of excess. That doesn't matter. Just push that down. Make sure that the cards are actually lined up. So this is these are my two straight edges. These are the ones I can count on. And now... It's time to dry it. So between the glossy surface, I'm going to just put it over here. Glossy surface is up. Place it down. Find the piece of paper. Glossy surface down on top of it to make sure that it won't stick to the paper. And then get my big heavy dragon and plonk. Done. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for a few minutes. I'm actually going to start working on the other card that we saw. Um, what I will do is I'll pull out and show you the ones I've already made uh, again and just show you these ones aren't as thick what I originally did was I made layers of Magic the Gathering cards in between my images so that I get the right thickness now that works but it's time consuming and it sucks seriously it sucks this cutting finding a piece of card off the back of a drawing pad because it's not got little holes in it, it's nice and condensed, this is going to be much easier for you. Uh, what's, uh, what's Eric saying here? Ekin, what he got here? Anyone interested in joining online chat that is sort of an always online running cooperative story game and an ongoing cooperative writing? Sounds interesting. Um, are you... Are you, are you trying to sell your stuff <laughs> and your, your setup on, on, my, on my channel during my live stream? Ah, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> okay, so that's what it looks like. Works out pretty cool. Okay, that's in comparison. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Just next time, just ask me, okay? You can't post links in there because I won't let you do it on live chat. YouTube doesn't allow that. But uh, yeah, you just ask. Yeah, totally understand. Um, so there's the difference. There's that first um, um, pawn we used. We made a template off that. There's our image. You know, which one do you prefer? I mean, I, I have to understand. I understand when you, look, one is taller. This one's taller, okay? This isn't as tall, but it's wide. But this is a flying creature, so it wouldn't necessarily have a lot of scale up anyway. This thing, if you can see, has got wings. Uh, move it up closer. Can you see it? Oh, come on, Fred. Bring it into view. Yeah. Bring it to view. There we go. There we go. All right, so there it is. That's pretty cool. I thought that's awesome in comparison to this. And I made this out of a Magic the Gathering card, of all things. All right. So that's one. And... Um, I'll just leave that there for now. I've got a whole bunch of them. Magic the Gathering's got so many cool monsters, it's awesome. And then the little one, because I did make a medium-sized one, which is my little wizard, sorcerer, whatever you want to call it. And 
because they've got that little um, film of clear plastic on it, they just survive a lot longer. Okay? Sticks onto a base. Piece of cake. So I was talking about using bases. I'm not going to bother opening this thing up because they, they look ident identical. They're exactly the same. This is just medium size. That's large size over there. <clears throat> this is just a clip. So if I cut this open, you can see the difference. I would use a clip of this size for a medium size miniature. Yeah. And the larger clip can be used for a larger miniature or pawn. So that's all we want. And open that up. This is the awesome part about it. You know, if you really want to do stuff and it not cost you a lot, you don't have to buy these things. I just clip this on here, like so. And I can clip it higher or lower. It's up to you. If you want to see more of the image, not a problem. Once I've done that, I just place it down on the um, table, squeeze these the pins together. Just can you see it? Squeeze and pluck it off. Do the same thing on the other side. Squeeze. Ah, oh, man. Getting a decent view so you guys can see this is really hard. Squeeze and off. There it is. Done. Does exactly the same thing as the plastic one. It's going to work fine. Trust me. So yes, you can do it that way. I'll just put that aside. Things are sort of dropping down around me right now. Alright, I'll leave that over there. And that pawn base can stay there. Uh, I'll just shove that in there for now. Alright, so let's make some more. Because that was the... Oh, almost forgot. Same thing with the large clip. Okay? You've got a large miniature or pawn that you've made. This one is... Gosh, it's, it's really cool. Look at that. Can you see that? That's what I've got. You're not going to be able to um, find anybody who can actually do that easily. So yeah, why not use this? I don't know why it is buffering. If it's buffering and you're having problems, I apologize. Okay. Alright, so, same thing as before. Clip open. Squeeze it closed. And here's the reason why I said don't worry about the bottom section. Because you're using a big clip. You can clip it on at the very bottom. And it looks like it's a lot taller now. Yeah? You can still see the image of the creature. Unclip it. Uh, can you see that? Unclip. I think that worked out better this time. Same thing again. Unclip. Come on. Yeah. All right. And there it is. Ha! Done. That was easy. And you can get ball clips anywhere. So even if you can't buy these things online because you're in a country, in a place like the, the WAPs somewhere, you can still make your own pawns with stands. Nice and simple. Dump that out of the way and shift that out of the way as well. And let's start cutting and trimming this. Oh, actually, probably by now we can we can go back since I've been showing you that. This is probably dried enough, you know. Most of the time it's just to initially get things set. Okay, so you can see this. I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer. This is what we made, or what I made. This is what it's gonna look like, both sides. Okay, it just needs a trim up, which we'll do right now. So we'll start over here and trim, trim, trim. Now I could use the scissors to trim the top, but I feel like I need to use a steel ruler. It's, it's one of those things, like I said, perfectionist and don't like things to be like exact. I, um, I know I'm fussy, but you don't need to be as fussy as me. Okay, so I've trimmed that. It looks pretty good on both sides. The corners aren't too bad. I could trim that more if I wanted, but I'm not going to bother. Yeah, a big knife. Remember, a big knife required for cutting through thick cardboard. All right, so find the point where it's going to be cut off. Fiddly bit this. All right, knife out and score it. If you only have a little bit of waste, scoring it's going to be like a waste of time because it just won't come off very easily and you might just want to just use some scissors to trim it up. Okay. 
And does it look right on the other side? Yep, it does. And we just need to score the side. Just tidy up the side as well. Like so. Ah, oh, this one's more difficult. There's just not enough material there. Did it, did it work? Well, almost. Let's try one more time. Nah. Ditching it, going for the scissors. Okay. That's tied it up pretty well. Yep, good. All right, now that we've done that, it's time to actually finish this thing, right? So this is what this stuff was all about. Uh, by, the uh, by the way, thanks for pronouncing my name correctly. Um, you're welcome. You know how bad, if you've watched any of my stuff, you know how bad I am at pronouncing names. Um, so I'm glad I got it right. Okay, so with this, all we want to do is find enough so that we can fold it around on both sides. That's all I want to do. I don't want to get too fancy. Just place that on there. And I'll just draw around roughly where I need to be. And then trim it up after. That's one. And there's a bit of a bit there. I can use that. Cool. Put it aside. Man. I knew my workspace would not be big enough for doing this. Just now, I you might have noticed some of the cuts on this piece of um, this roll aren't they're not sort of jagged in any, any way. That's just because when I'm doing this, I sort of take my time, I don't really sort of go to bananas, and uh, but it's not really going to be very helpful if I take forever to show you all this stuff. We can be finished here in no time. Okay, so there's our piece. We just need to find a corner. Peeling back this stuff off. Here we go, got a corner. Let's make sure I've got no little bits of fine stuff sticking in. There we go. Lay it down. Stick it on there. Now, the bottom section, you can actually roll under if you want to. I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm just going to press it on, get rid of any air bubbles, like so. And then I'm going to trim just the, just the, the, the massive excess that I've provided there. I can do a finer trim later. go and grab all of the sticky bits so I don't get stuck to it. Chuck that over there. Now I'm, I'm not going to worry about trimming the rest of it just this, just this minute. I mean I could, there's no reason why you couldn't, but I'm just going to grab the next piece and stick that on. Oh. This is, the, this is the, the fiddly bit, trying to find a corner there we go, got one. Yeah. All right, rubbish over there. And same thing as before. And then just try to get rid of the air bubbles if there's any. And make sure it's stuck down good and flat. And then just trim off the waste. which is probably going to take you probably the longest part of it, really. Plastic clear through and clear see-through um, sheet is awesome stuff, 
but it's fiddly and it doesn't like cut very well sometimes. You can use a knife if you want. I find that the scissors are good enough. There we go, that's that side. Cut that one. Trimming around, uh, sticky bits. Ah, I've got little bits of plastic stuck to me now. That's good. Need to get rid of that. Ah, come off. Come off. There we go. Um, oh. I know this seems like an awful lot of effort to go to, but if you if you do it right and you do it in like a, you know, a couple of hours and you do it in like a batch, it's going to be easier because you sort of you do you get into a rhythm. That's the that's what I find anyway. That's actually finished. That's done. I don't know how long that took us to do, but um, it's finally finished us oh god long time anyway there it is finished and you pull that off stick that onto here like so and it's good and thick so it will it'll actually stick in there and hold in place and you can see in terms of the thickness mine is just fractionally thicker okay so there's nothing wrong with that that's perfectly fine these are plastic, so they'll separate, and if you're using a ball clip, it won't matter in the slightest. Okay? So that's how you make a pawn using Magic the Gathering cards. Very, very simple, and it's low cost. As far as I'm concerned, it's probably going to cost you less. It's just the time factor. Unless you have time, it's not going to work out for you. But if you can't buy pawns, or you just don't have any money, then this is a great way to go. And uh, yeah, you can do the same thing with medium-sized creatures, not just large size. And you can do huge. That's not an issue too. Because remember, this pack comes with two huge bases. And there's no reason why you can't use that bull clip for a huge creature. Uh, the base might not be quite as large, but you could still have it on that. And it'll sit down and uh, it'll stand up. Okay, so yeah, you had some questions. Um, you have a question related to miniature creation. Okay, how do you think original metal miniatures were made? Were they sculpted? Yeah, original metal miniatures were sculpted. All miniatures are. Um, and then after that, they make up a, a, a mold. And then they cast it from pewter. And that's my understanding. That's what I understand about it. Um, nowadays they haven't been using pewter because they've they got better at making miniatures and so they use plastic and rubber and resin um, and they can get better results one of the great things I think going from metal to plastic although it does I mean there's something nice about weight but all of my metal miniatures are hard to store they damage each other um, unless you have separate sort of um, sections and foam separating them, they're just a pain. Whereas my plastic miniatures and the rubber plasticky miniatures, they they store really really well. Did that answer your question? All right, I'm going to just move this out of the way, put that over there since that's the one we made, and I'm not too sure how long we've been going for, but I'm going to hang around and just do a little bit more. You guys are well, welcome to head off or ask some questions. It did? Okay, well I'm glad I was able to answer your question. Uh, we're into 5-7. Yep, so I'm going to just keep doing this. Because I might as well. I've got nothing else to do right now. Um, and yeah, by all means, if you guys want to ask any questions, just throw them out there. Uh... 
would you consider sculpting from safer metals? Oh, you mean actually using metal to sculpt with? I don't think they did that. Um, my understanding is they used uh, everything from plaster of Paris to plasticine, uh, just for mock-ups, to, to, to actually wax. How's it going, Alexander? <laughs> yes, you made it. We, we have actually made at least one pawn. And the chat. Yeah, yeah. So we have made one pawn. Here it is. And I'm just going to keep chatting for a little while and just continue making um, more pawns. Um, probably not for too long because I almost lost my voice. I did a review for Horde of the Dragon Queen, which I had actually shot with a friend ages ago. And I just, I can't stand having to edit video. I, I have to do so much of it. And with a, a video like every day, which which is my own, own fault. I'm the one who decided to do that, right? Nobody else did. Um, but it, it's a drag. It really is editing video. Just want to shoot it, put it up, chuck all the tags on, description, put the end, end screen stuff on, any cards, <sighs> making sure I tag it properly. Otherwise, all my videos just disappear off the face of the earth. <laughs> it's one of the hassles with um, YouTube changing the way that uh, the search function and the suggestions work. Uh, would you consider sculpting your own miniatures from wax or whatever you said? Yes, um, I wouldn't use wax. What I'm going to do eventually is I'm going to use metal, aluminium foil, and I'm going to use um, a type of sculpty. It's just a sculpting clay, and you just what you're going to do is you're going to add the two parts together and then flatten it out into a nice thin um, layer and then wrap it around the, the aluminium foil just to get the first layer. But it's a time-consuming process. I don't know that there's an awful lot of people who would be terribly interested in that. That's my biggest issue with it. Uh, the other problem is that as a general rule, so far, and I'm not saying this is definite, but so far, the video I did on making the, the mock-up for the Hydra was not that popular. Um, I still will do the Hydra because I haven't got that many and they're hard to get. But yeah, I don't think I'll do an awful lot of sculpting. There's a lot of better people at doing that than me. Okay, alright. Well, you know, it's, it's not... Uh, <laughs> It's not lost on me, I'm just, um, I guess I have to be careful. There are times when uh, this channel sort of takes over and I've got to be careful that I don't, don't forget that I do actually have to pay the bills. Um, sculpting videos, I've seen them. Actually, I've got somebody on my, plan, on my uh, channel list for this, for this channel. And I think his name's Tom. And you want to go and have a look and see what Tom does. Now, Tom, Tom's a pro. He's going to be really, really helpful for you to learn how to do everything because he does it properly. Whereas I would just be an amateur. Okay. Oh, this is the this is the bit that I dislike is trying to line them up. I've got to get a better way of doing this. Lining it up and then cutting my line. Ugh, my fingers are getting sticky now. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I, I did a whole bunch of reviews. And I've done The Rise of Tiamat, because I've run it. Horde of the Dragon Queen, because I've run that as well. Uh, I did one on... Oh, that horrible... Princes of the Apocalypse. I played in it. I ran part of it. I did one on that. I will probably do the Curse of Strahd. And I'm not talking like a flip through. I'm talking about how it turned out for me. I was actually thinking that what I should probably do is for people who really want a bit more detail is just do a live stream chat where people can just ask me as I flip through the book and I talk about it. Questions. Because um, I haven't seen anybody do that. You know, sometimes people like to run those pre-made adventures 
I wish I didn't have to run as many as I have, um, but I find that most of the players who play at my table are more interested in the pre-made adventures than my own stuff. And even if I add my own stuff to a pre-made adventure, they think it was re actually written into the original adventure. So <laughs> you can't win. Can I give him directions on my... Yeah, yep. Give him directions in the chat by all means. Go for it. Uh, and line them up. And a template, which we'll draw out. Okay. Let's mark that out again. One. Ah, oh, I keep doing this. Keep, I've got to make sure the camera can actually see what's going on, otherwise all you see is the back of my hand. There we go, that's better. And a little round bit, which I'll just flip around a little bit to get at. So that's that one marked out. Mark out the other one. Same thing as before. You know, I probably would have done, I would not have done live um, stream unless I was doing it on a phone. And you know why? Because it's so simple. There's, it's much more complicated when you start using a camera and a, um, you know, a dedicated camera and your computer this is much, much harder. Oh, so hang on to Fred, by the way. Oh, what's the question? Sorry, I missed that. Um, he can, uh, I would have got here. Uh, using a phone, so uh, internet may give me a moment to catch a link or something. All right. Uh, tavern forum. All right, I have one. on a site called roles check out the tavern forum look for a post by Eakin click the link and it will take you to our chat okay well you guys are organizing yourself back there well done <laughs> all right so that's there turn that round Yeah, I'm probably not going to um, come off this chat. Uh, after this, I've got housework to do and a shite load of video to cut together and edit and then upload, which is going to take me forever. All right, so where is my, there we go, that's what I want. Oh, okay. When did you start playing? Oh, right, sure. Um, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. I had the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons or Second Ed Edition for years. I had the books, which I gave away, which I feel like I shouldn't have done. Um, and, and I played 3.5 for about six months. And then Fourth Ed Edition came out. And unfortunately, my dungeon master wanted to play the new game, and so we shifted to that. But as it turned out, I wound up playing 4th edition, and then I played 3.5 with another group for quite a while. And how many years back? Jeez, I, I couldn't even tell you. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Uh, then I played Pathfinder. Um, I played... A game called Star Wars Saga, which was a role-play game. I played Fate. I played a whole lot of things. I was playing probably too many role-play games. I didn't have a life. And and now I'm playing Dungeons & Dragons 5e pretty much exclusively. There's not much else going on now. And most of the people who were playing Pathfinder 
that I know are now shifted over and they're playing 5e. Um, but there's still, there's still people who play it, and there's still people who play 3.5. I get questions about that. I can't really answer too many questions about that particular game system, because although I played it, I didn't really dungeon master it. I dungeon mastered Star Wars Saga, and Dungeons and Dragons 4e, and 5th edition. I did those ones. Um, right, there we go. It says that. We'll cut. Good, that's gone. And there. Oh. Matching up the line with the ruler. Always tricky. <laughs> you guys are going to kind of fuse me. <laughs> I won't know who's who's talking to me and who's talking to somebody else. <laughs> All right, that way around. Oh, my eyes are so bad. I do have glasses. Yeah, I do have glasses, usually for driving. But... Um, it's all this fine fiddly stuff. I just can't see anything. So maybe it's time to get some glasses for seeing close as well. I think half the problem is the lights that I've got going because my, my eyes don't deal well with the light. You know, if I get flashed in the eyes, I'm kind of blind. Yeah, there we go. Let's cut away. Uh, okay, what is this? Um, Fred, what do you think about Wizards of the Coast currently? Do you like where they are going? Okay, so Wizards of the Coast is going in the direction they have to go. I understand that. Um, what I think is problematic for people who are playing this game, one, I didn't feel like Dungeons & Dragons 5e was simple enough. I'm not really concerned about the splat books. Um, and the lack of them. I never have been worried about that. I, I kind of feel like it's up to the players and the Dungeon Master to create their own stuff. And there are so many third-party people creating stuff that's not an issue. The adventures that they're putting out aren't really suitable for what people want. They are big-scale adventures. They're quite complicated. Almost all of them you have to read the entire book to have any idea what the heck you're doing. And it's 200 something pages. The only one that has any redeeming um, features are, I would say, the Tales from the Yawning Portal. Because it's made up of lots of little ones. Little adventures are good. You know, you look back at the older adventures, and I've run a lot of them for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. I've, I've run first edition and basic adventures. You know, I've, I've done them with the new rule system. And they're great. They're easy to prepare, easy to understand, and I can add stuff to them and make it my own. And they encourage that. These new ones, it's it's just it's just a huge campaign, and it, it's a bit much work. I, I don't have time to sit down and spend an hour or half an hour preparing for every hour of play. It's just not possible. Um, what do you got here? All I'm getting right now is a post link from Toothless Nightmare or something similar. I will try it on my computer after stream, so hopefully I'll find it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think that if they had done that and made... I mean, it's nothing wrong with producing a big book, but lots of little adventures. Which is why I have done a review on the Book of Lairs, so that people can check that one out, because it's full of little adventures... And a reasonably sized book. Um, still a bit expensive, but they had the right idea. This is Cabold Press. And then there's another book called Prepared. And that's that's a really nice product. Same sort of thing. It's like two pages. It's enough to run for the night. It takes you five minutes to prepare. Anybody can do that. You know? It, it feels much more like where it, things need to be. And right now, they're not really where they need to be. 
Um, that said, Wizards of the Coast has certainly moved things forward. If they kept going the way they were, they were probably going to go die. You know, they, they had their competition was Pathfinder, and really all they needed to do was show back up and, and actually do something to get anywhere. Oh, hang on, I've got to cut off the, the bottom section. I forgot about that. Uh, if they if they just do things better than Paizo, uh, they're back in the running. And they have. They've done that. You know? And what, probably the one adventure they put out recently that I haven't done a review on or played much in or dungeon mastered, which I wanted to, was Out of the Abyss. I really wanted to do it. But it's an absolute pain in the butt. This thing here is a pain in the butt to actually prepare for. I tried indexing it because there's so many characters. I got through 50 pages three days later and I was like, no. And there's some really cool locations, really good ideas, lots of really nifty NPCs. There's too many NPCs to control. Um, I truthfully found it frustrating and I still want to do something with this book. I just don't know what. Uh, I feel like I have to actually just come up with something else completely different or just pull those locations out and place them differently. And the, I guess the overall story itself, I suppose is all right, but I kind of feel like it's, it sort of doesn't tie things in for me. I don't know how I'm going to use it. And I, I, I want my, my players to face up against the demons at full power. And not necessarily all at once, but certainly at least one after the other. Um, I don't want them diminished in power. You're welcome, Ekin. Alright, so I'm going to cut off the base of this. You've got to be careful when you ask a question. I can wind up going on and on and on. <laughs> This is a sort of a strange, I'd say like a demon-like creature with a flaming whip. And I think it's actually a female. I kind of think it is a female. Um, either that or is that some sort of fire that's hitting the half of it. No, coming out of it. Oh, this flaming whip is actually coming out of the chest. Oh, that's awesome. Love it. Cut that off. Okay, now that I've got my image for my pawn, I'll grab my piece of paper. And all I've got to do is draw around this, just like before. Just making sure that the edge is lined up is the, the tricky bit. Um, hang on, let me turn this around. I did it again, didn't I? Yeah. I'm looking at my computer screen, and while I'm looking at my computer screen, I'm not looking at the fact that I need to line myself up with the camera, which is the phone, not the computer screen. Okay, so now I can draw around that. Unk. Draw around there. Let's turn it around. Did I miss something in there? If I've missed somebody's chat, just bring it back up again. It's getting a little confusing because I've got somebody else communicating about something else. <laughs> so, so if I've missed you, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> Alright. Okay, that's that done. Remember, big knife. <laughs> Autocorrect. Oh, okay. So we'll just move that out of the way and lay my straight edge. I haven't been able to, like I said recently, I haven't been able to do anything with my keyboard other than gobbledygook because the letter A didn't work and. <laughs> Alright. Did I cut all the way through? No. 
I didn't cut all the way through. Shouldn't have lifted the ruler till I'd cut all the way through. Oh, oh that's that's done it. Good. Do 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 do. Ah, there we go. And that's that one done. And we'll get rid of this. Dump that. Slide that in so I don't cut myself or jab, jag myself on it. There we go. And as I said, don't worry about cutting off the corners until you've stuck it on. Grab our images. Move my heavy weight out of the way. Make sure my bits of paper are ready to go. And some glue. Oh, I sprayed myself. Okay, glue time. Come on, out. Yeah, here we go. We're on our way. Not too much glue, as I said before. This um, cardboard is quite porous, so it can absorb quite a lot more glue than um, a shinier surface. But you don't want to have to get rid of too much excess glue, it's always painful. And I don't have to go right into the corners on that one because it's got a curve on it. So what are people doing uh, where they are right now, other than watching my stream? You got uh, anything going? Is it late at night? Having dinner? Watching TV? Prepping for a game? Painting miniatures. Tortle, are you checking out the um, Alexander? Are you talking, checking out the new Tortle uh, document that's been released? Everybody's going to wind up with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in their game. <laughs> Fred, you deserve more subscribers. Have you ever considered making? your own introduction to the game videos or to game videos to welcome new players and, and video and viewers not saying that you have to but it's a good idea yeah i did make a trailer and it's an old trailer it's i did it like a year ago it's not very good um i i don't know that i necessarily i seem to be growing better than some of the smaller channels but uh, I don't have high production and I, and I don't spend a lot of time on my videos. They're, they're really, you know, I just have to smash them out, edit them and put them up. Um, I wanted to do another trailer, but it's going to have to wait until Christmas when I have a bit of time. Because I realized when I was wanting to do a new trailer that whatever I do needs to reflect what I'm doing on the channel. And I go all over the place. But... Primarily, my channel tends to be about rules, uh, which I feel like is a, a catch-22 for me because um, there's, there's, there's lots of rules. I could do rules until the cows go home, but it's, it's, they're, 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 they are the most painful videos to do. Anything to do with the rules, um, is, it's hard work because if I get something wrong, someone's going to tell me, which is fine. I want them to. But I often, you know, I'm shooting this stuff late at night and so I do make mistakes. Um, and I've also got to be aware that this is supposed to be a hobby rather than an actual job. And some of these people are doing this as a job, you know, that's, it's their only income. And right now I do have an income coming from a different source. Um, uh, okay, what's this, Ekin? I personally despise the turtle. <laughs> it makes me want to jump a cliff. <laughs> No offense meant. I'm not taking offense. <laughs> oh dear. Having dinner seems like a good idea. I should probably be having some lunch. Otherwise, I'm going to be having dinner if I keep running this um, for too long. All right, so that's stuck on. We'll do some gluing on the other side. Um, I don't like using it much personally, but I won't hate players doing it. I think the 
the total's got a place. Um, I, I think it's going to be more amusing because there, there was apparently a discussion between is it Mike Mills and Jeremy Crawford about the total, and as a result, uh, Chris Perkins decided to make a document for it. <laughs> uh, dear, I, f I find that very, very entertaining. I think that's hilarious. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Portal. I like, I actually, I ran an adventure with portals in it. I think it was called as uh, Princess of the S Silver Palace or Castle. I can't, jeez, it's, it's a really old adventure. I managed to find the original that they took off the shelves that they didn't want anybody to see. <laughs> and uh, I ran that. And that was a lot of fun. And it had, I decided to put um, in the general location, because it didn't give you a lot of information about around that area, I decided to put some turtles, a little village of turtles. Uh, the, no, the Warhammer races aren't supported in official Dungeons and Dragons, but Dungeons and Dragons has stolen from everywhere, and so has Warhammer. So it wouldn't surprise me if eventually somebody decides to pinch somebody else's property although i don't think any of them have done anything that's even remotely original it's all stuff they've just taken from somebody else really yeah it is cheeky if you have a look at some of the adventures I'm just squeezing the glue out here that uh gary gygax created and made he, he he looked at popular culture and he tried to duplicate it whether it would be books um, or whether it was a movie, <laughs> it didn't matter. He was going to take that and turn it into a Dungeons and Dragons adventure, which is really cool. Um, but they, they did wind up having to deal with, I believe it was the Tolkien estate at one point regarding the orc. <laughs> and, um, you know, whether they had taken intellectual property by having orcs in their game. Still think it's hilarious. Very, very funny. Okay. So just making sure that's all biscuited together. And I'm lining up the bottom so it's it's flush. As I said, just make sure it's flush at the bottom. And then pick a side that you want to be flush as well. And that'll be the side that's all flush on. And that's good. And then we just stick it between the, the, the glossy surface of your paper. Plonk, and the other glossy surface. And something big and heavy on top. Plop. Just like that. I might, while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit, I might have a little peek through my little collection of cards and see if there's anything that might be suitable for a medium-sized creature. Uh, what do I got here? I feel like you could spend a lot of time looking through... Ooh... I, that would be cool as an NPC, somebody flying on a bird. But I don't think it's going to work in this case. That's not really going to work either. I've already got one of them. Uh, it's too big. I want something smaller. I don't really want to troll. That looks like an ass. I could, I could turn that into a medium size um, pawn if I wanted to. He looks like he's just kicked in a, a post. Ah, oh, hang on. So what's this? I love Gary too. Gary's awesome. Uh, what's the question? Alexander, what do you got here? Do you know what Blood Bowl is? Yes, I do. It is a game where you pretty much try to smash over the other side while trying to get your ball around the field. Um... It's based off a movie called, I think it was called Rollerblade, originally. And they made another movie called Future Sport, um, years after. And that's all sort of related. It's sort of like the futuristic smash them over a football game, or some sort of game that involves a ball. Um... 
I find it somewhat similar to D&D for some reason. Well, it is. It, you mean you could use the concept of Blood Bowl in your Dungeons and Dragons game. It's actually quite a, a nifty idea. Can you imagine running an adventure where arena battles can get a little bit dull, but you had a game where they're playing on a field, running around, uh, and they've, they, can, they can take each other out, but they're trying to get the ball to one side or through a goal. That would be an awesome idea. I think it's a fantastic way to actually incorporate an arena battle into your Dungeons and Dragons game. Blood Bowl, why not? Uh, good morning, how's it going? Uh, used magic cards. Yes, I am. I'm using magic cards to make the pawns. Yes, well, it's be the reason I know what Blood Bowl is, I used to play Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer, and I used to play a lot of the Games Workshop games. So, yeah, Blood Bowl, who didn't know it? It's an awesome game. Uh, couldn't load on my phone. Oh, that's not related to me. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, do I have enough of these? I do. I could do the ass kicking in the wall. Just shuffle that over there. I might save that for another time because I, I feel like if I can, if you can do it as a large size, you can do it as a small size. Uh, all right, let's have a look and trim up this. This is hopefully dry. Okay, sharp knife, straight edge. Make sure I point it so you guys can see me cutting. There we go. Knife comes out. Oh, I feel like I'm twisting myself up a bit. At least there's a little bit more excess on this, so it's a little bit easier to cut. Slicing, slicing, slicing. And is it done? No, go all the way through, Fred. Here we go. Okay, what's the question? I can see people throwing stuff up here. Alexander, um, you, I tried, I, I tried in the champion ladder a while back okay and landed around fifth i believe we'll say i got lucky with my orcs yeah i've only had to deal with orcs once and um they either blow themselves up or they wind up killing themselves or they decimate you <laughs> if they get any close it's all over Uh, but I cannot understand the voice. Oh, I see. Okay. Sorry if I can't produce everything in a different language. I just, I looked at the translation stuff and it, it's just too costly. And I just recently bought myself a, a microphone. <sighs> that doesn't work on my phone for this very purpose. And <laughs> It's $119, which I can take it back. I mean, I can do that. But now I've got to go and buy a keyboard because my keyboard is its uh, over. It needs to be replaced. And so, yes, I'm, I'm having to make decisions now about where I put my money. And uh, paying for that translation is just a bit too hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm here doing chat. I'm chatting away. By the way, it looks like you need some help. How about a subscriber? By all means, feel free to join. I'm usually here uh, live once a week and everything else I shoot ahead of time. Uh, oh, that's, that's gonna be tricky. All right. That cut off. I've got my sides sorted, and now I'll just do the corners. Uh, I'm sorry. Sometimes, sometimes if I run this for too long, it just it starts getting little problems. All right, that's that done. Okay. And 
So I kind of feel like I chopped off too much there. Never mind. The internet is excellent, except when it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad somebody else is picking me up all right. I'm hoping that the replay will work all right for those people who want to watch it later. All right, so I've done my pawn. This is my second one now. And I'm going to get rid of all the little bits and pieces and we'll get some more of this adhesive clear sheet. And... I wonder if I can just get away with just not marking it out. I just want to get it done faster. Well, that was a mistake. Oh, well, there's one. Let's do another one. Okay. Where is this? Uh, turn it that way. Uh, shuffle it over. No! Struggle. Fiddly. Alright. And get out of the way. Alright. What's that done? Well, if there aren't too many more questions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick some tape on this. Well, this, this adhesive stick on stuff onto my last pawn and do I have a favorite spell yes I do have a favorite spell um, you might be slightly disappointed by my favorite spell most of them involve fire <laughs> uh, but to be fair when it comes to spells it's the cantrips that I tend to go with first those are the ones you use the most right my favorite spell would be minor illusion and Fireball or Firebolt, any of those. I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. They're, I like Minor Illusion because I can get away with a lot more. And I have run adventures, um, or should I say played in adventures, where all I did was use Minor Illusion. And I did that deliberately just to see what my Dungeon Master would do. And uh, also just because I thought it would be funny. Fireball, Fireball, Fireball. Firebolt, when I run out of fireball, uh, minor illusion. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's cut off nice and easy. Good. Uh, do I use waste magic cards? Yeah, waste magic cards. Look, these are cards that my friend was going to throw away. And he knew what I was going to do, and he gave, it, gave them to me. Uh, yeah, look, Alexander, I love screwing with the enemies with Mage Hand um, and Illusion as well. Minor Illusion is awesome. Mage Hand is great. Uh, it's just the weight restriction that can cause a few issues, depending on what you're trying to do. And if you're worried about trying to pick up Magic the Gathering cards, trust me, most Magic the Gathering um, players have more cards than they ever want to have and they're trying to get rid of their stuff all the time and you can get the cheap um, commons the ones that they get huge stacks of that they really don't use that aren't very powerful uh, those cards you can use for your pawns because whether the card is a really good card for Magic the Gathering usually they've got really nice images on them Right, I think that side is cut off. And uh, okay. Well, the thing with Magic the Gathering is to get better at playing the game, you've got to learn how to play the game. But ultimately, it's about buying cards. It's been set up so you have to buy cards. So they always have like truckloads of them. So it's not going to be an issue finding Magic the Gathering cards. Did I stick that in the wrong... Oh, oh, put it in the wrong place. You like the... You like Magic Missile and Sleep. Yes, Magic Missile and Sleep are awesome spells. I agree. Um, sleep is really, really powerful at low level. 
as the monsters get more and more hit points, it's less useful. But, you know, you can solve a lot of problems with sleep. And Magic Missile, get through damage resistance. Most things don't have damage resistance to Magic Missile. And you don't have to roll, um, worry about rolling to hit. One of my biggest peeves is on a 20 sided dice, I seem to roll ones and twos consistently. And um, I did a video on how to check the dice balance. My, my chances of rolling are getting better. <laughs> but um, sometimes I'm, I'm stacking the deck. So I'm, I'm going out of my way to buy specific dice so that I get better rolls. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't do any anything, you know. I miss, I miss, I miss, I miss. Uh, so it's good to have something that will, uh, will automatically hit and you just roll your damage. Although, if you've got shield, magic missile is not going to help. Alright. Oh, little bits of sticky bit everywhere. Let's get rid of that. Where's my little card? I was just trimming it. Trim, trim, trim. And... Feels pretty good. So, this is the last one. I'm probably going to wrap it... Oh, hang on. Down, 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 there. So this is my last pawn that I'm going to make for today. And yeah, pretty easy to do. Not hard to do. Anybody can do it. It's not that costly. Uh, what's this last comment here? Alexander, what have you got here? I stopped gambling almost immediately before my dice luck. Ah, oh, throughout the years. Yeah, well, that's like that. What's this, Ekin? Fred, you are among the few DD channels I call my favorite. Among these is Esper, yes. Esper the Bard, I do know him. He doesn't do a lot nowadays. He used to do some really cool videos. He used to watch all of his stuff. And who's another one that I like? I watch all of Matthew Colville's stuff, but I think everybody does. Um, the other one that I like quite a lot is. Drow Bar is it Drow Bard? I think it's I think that's right. I think it's Drow Bard. Drow something. Anyway, so that is how to make your own Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder pawns if you really wanted to. And to be fair, I mean you can print these things out on using your printer and do the same sort of process. There's actually a, a website, a couple of websites that you can do that with. And they're easy to find. Even um, Paizo Pathfinder has a place where you can download a PDF with pawns that you can print out. And then you just make them up yourself. You can do that. It's not very hard to do. Anyway, I need to wrap this up and uh, before my voice gives out. Look, if you found this video helpful or informative, please share, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you didn't like it, totally understand. Uh, if you have any questions about the process, by all means, put a comment below when this thing is able to be commented on. Put it below and I will do my best to answer those questions. I don't know that I'll necessarily do another video on this. I might try to shoot a video in a shorter form rather than something as long as this. Uh, until next time, keep rolling those 20s.